Good morning, everyone. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hopefully everyone had a great weekend and everybody's staying safe and healthy and, and doing all right. Um, we're going to be looking in Joshua chapter 8 today, picking up where Jeff White uh, finished up in Joshua 7. Um, I tell you, the last few weeks has been such a blessing listening to all, you know Kevin and Chris and Hoy and Jeff you know, give these devotions. There's so many nuggets that we can kind of take in and apply to our lives every day. And it's been, it's been an encouragement to me. Hopefully it's been an encouragement to everybody else. Um, for quick review and, and Joshua seven, which Jeff White finished up on, uh, you may remember the defeat at AI because of the sin in the camp. This Israelite people just conquered Jericho was going up against the little city of AI and kind of took matters into their own hands. Um, and got defeated. And we know the reason why was because of Achan taking the valuables from Jericho and hiding them in their camp, which was, you know, uh, against what God told them to do. So as we move into the chapter 8, I was thinking kind of the theme of chapter 8, and this is what we're going to be looking at, would be turning defeat into victory. And I think there's many ways we can do that in our own lives, but let's, let's look at the story here um, and go through it. It's kind of a new beginning for the Israelite people. They had a, a big victory at Jericho. They got beat at Ai. So here they go up against Ai again, and it's kind of a new beginning. Um, I think discouragement of our past many times or fear of the future are two reactions that can accompany failure, and we see that with the Israelite people. But picking up here in verse 1, um, the Lord gives Joshua words of encouragement. I'm going to read verse 1 here in a second. But as I think about Joshua's life and as we've done this study, there are so many qualities and attributes that he had that many of us should even strive for. I mean, when we think of Joshua, I think of a great leader, uh, a man of war. But how would you like to know you had to follow Moses' shoes and you know, basically pick that up and carry the people into the promised land? What a task that is. And we don't need to overlook that. But... Uh, let's read verse 1 and talk about the words of encouragement that uh, the Lord gave him. Verse 1 says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not. There's the quote I want to focus on. Fear not. Neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee and arise. Go up to Ai. See, I have given into thy hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. So right there in verse 1, God is reminding Joshua kind of like he did in, in the first chapter, Joshua chapter 1, be strong and a good courage, Joshua, fear not. So he's kind of putting that in his mind, you know, of remembrance um, that with the Lord they can conquer all these cities, especially the little city of Ai. I thought in our lives, um, many times we can be like uh, Israel was going into this battle, that we can be defeated um, kind of like they were, whether it's sin in our lives or not even that so much. What, what Maybe it's, it's circumstances in our lives, maybe family problems or financial problems, um, whatever the case might be, maybe even this virus, you know, that things, life can get complicated. But if we turn to the Lord like, like Israel does here, um, we can get through these problems. Let's uh, look at the second part of verse 1 again. I think it's, you, we have to notice the promise that was given to Joshua. And there's so many promises in the word that are given to us. It says here, I had given into thy hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. So right there, Joshua was being reaffirmed that this is yours, Joshua. Um, the battle, let's talk about the battle a little bit. The battle in chapter 8 was pretty neat. God gave Joshua kind of a clue. He says, give him an ambush. And for a quick story here, um, Joshua sends out 30,000 men by night to, to go around the backside of the, of the camp of Ai. And he tries to lure them out, knowing that they would chase, uh, the people of Ai would chase them out, thinking they were fleeing, and then they could go in and sack the city and burn the city. So uh, Joshua followed the instructions that was given to him by the Lord. And I think that's a, a great thought there for our lives, that we need to follow the instructions of the Lord. Follow what's written in the Bible, um, and we can become victorious many, many times. Um, the second thing I want to focus on is Joshua's commitment. Uh, I encourage you to read through this. There's a lot in there. But at the end of this, at the battle, after they won the battle, Joshua does something that's very important. 
uh, he remembers the words of Moses. In Deuteronomy chapter 27, Moses gives his farewell speech to the people, charges Joshua, but mentions this to them about setting up an altar of not only remembrance, but a peace offering there in Shechem. Uh, Abraham did the same thing there. So Joshua was following the command and the charge that Moses gave him. And I find it interesting, when, they, when Joshua crossed the Jordan River, I think Kevin spoke on this, he set up an altar, got the 12 stones out of the riverbank, and set up an altar of rem remembrance. Um, here again, we need to do that in our own lives. Um, there's so many times, and we hear it uh, in church, you know, of all the blessings that God has done for us in the past and how easy it is for us many times to forget those things unless we're disciplined to write them down. I mean, we move on to the next things in life and kind of, and kind of put things on the back burner. And I don't think it's by, you know, by purpose, um, but I think sometimes we do that. Moses was a great leader because if you remember in, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, I think it was, after they crossed the Red Sea, after all the plagues, he told the people of Israel one thing. He says, don't forget what the Lord has done for us. Tell it in the households. Tell the kids while they're playing. And I think that's a, a great thing us as parents and as Christians to do with our friends, with our families, with our kids, to reflect back and tell them not to really forget uh, of the victories that we've had and all the things God has done in our lives. Um, I think it would be, be good for us to do that. So I guess the challenge of today's lessons, here again, it's just chapter 8 just focuses on just the battle of AI and how they defeated them in the ambush, and I encourage you to read that. But the, the challenge today, I feel like, is to, how do we turn defeat into victory, just like Joshua did and the Israelites did against the, the battle of uh, AI here where they won. Um, so let's, uh, let's think on that today. I hope you all have a great morning. And uh, let's say a prayer and we'll be finished. Lord, we love you, God. We thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for our church family, God. We thank you for all our many blessings. Help us not to forget all the things you've done for us, God, in the past. Help us to reflect on your word, God, and take it to heart. We pray for our country at this time that you'll give our leaders wisdom and guidance, God. Be with our church family and our church leaders, God. We ask for your hand of protection on us. We thank you for all your many blessings and keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.